Before that, let us uh, welcome ang ating pong mga kapatid. First, sa ating pong mga nasa Zoom, we'd like to welcome Sister Delia Corporal, ganun din po, Brother Vic, and Sister Gia of Palawan. Sa ating pong uh, uh, Facebook Live, we have... Naid Saidin, Beverly Castaneda, Antes, we have Dominador Isip, uh, Flora Matugina, we have Ana Dolor Cordero, Jaisel Herrera and Vince Herrera, kasama yung aking apo na nanunood ngayon. Okay, we have Tess Reyes, uh, Maria Lazaro, Franz Vargas, Sister Mila Maranya, Joyce Ivasco Cruz, Esther Bell Princena, Procora or Connie Oibinki, and Maria Ana Ojeda. Okay, so yung pong iba, mabasahin po natin mamaya before we end our uh, service tonight. Okay, so... Ngayong gabi po, tayo ay patuloy na mag-aaral ng ating pong series. We're talking about the image of God. Okay? So this is a series on the image of God. Last week, we talk about Jesus as human. Okay? Because we want to correct ang ating pong idea tungkol sa ating uh, being conformed to the image of Christ. Maliwanag po ang sinasabi sa Biblia, ang ating conformity with Christ is not His divinity, but His incarnation. When He incarnate, His humanity. Yun po ang ating destiny. That's why ang tawag sa Kanya ay the firstborn among many sons. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10, ang gusto niya ay ano? mag-raise up ng mga bringing many sons to glory. Okay? So, so, in Genesis chapter 1, conveys our essential humanity. Let's have a short review muna bago tayo magpatuloy ng ating pong series on the part 3 of the image of God. So, the praise image of God is only mentioned or appears in Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 5, and Genesis chapter 9. The praise image of God is absent from the rest of the Old Testament. And the rest now ay matatagpuan natin sa New Testament. At sinasabi ng Biblia that Jesus is not the image of God. Why? Because He is God. Another statement is Jesus is the image of God because He is human. Yun po ang basis ng ating pong uh, yung sinasabi ng Diyos na image of God. We are created in the image and the likeness of God. Okay? His entry into human history actually is not a plan B. It is the finale of His plan A. God has us only one plan to restore back ang nasira doon sa Garden of Eden. Jesus is and does what humans were meant to be and do. That's why He became man to model to us what is human. Because the glory of God is sin in our humanity. Kasi may misconception tayo, akala natin magiging Diyos tayo. No, you cannot. Man cannot become God. Because God is, He is the only one who is what? Incorruptible. Humans and the other beings like the angels, they are what? Corruptible. At makita natin sa kanyang buhay, He surrendered His own life for the sake of others because Jesus was human. 
He experienced all that we do. He experienced hunger, thirst, weariness, and even temptations. He will, ang kaibahan lang, hindi siya nagkasala. He required sleep. He wept over loss. He was bullied and he was betrayed. He knew longing and desire and pain na ating nararanasan din. He was injured, bled, and was scarred. So being human involves frailty or infirmity, weakness and dependence on God. And Jesus experienced these things in his aging body without losing an inch of his status or dignity. Bakit? Hindi siya nagkasala. Like what he said in Hebrews 4.15, He has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet He did not sin. So as human, Jesus possesses the same identity as every other human as the image of God. Nakawa niyo po. Jesus is the image of God because He is human. And we possess the same identity And his closeness with the Father enabled him to radiate the glory and represent God in a ways that are appropriate to that identity. Ganun din tayo. The glory that will be revealed to us, it depends upon our proximity with the Lord. That's why the use of the word Father or Son language designate Jesus as God's elevated covenant partner distant to rule on his behalf. Yan po yung status ni Jesus when he was sent here on earth. Because he wants to redeem man. Okay? Hindi lang mapatawad yung ating mga kasalanan. Sa redemption na binabanggit dito ng Panginoon, kasama ang ating rulership dito sa lupa. So Jesus rightfully takes the throne intended for humans. He takes the throne. Diba sabi sa Psalm chapter 8 verse 4, What is a man that you are mindful of him? You have given him the authority and the rulership over the works of your hands. Yan ang tao. Okay? Ibinigay sa atin ang rulership ng earth. Kaso lang, we surrender it to the fallen sons. So in the process, sabi niya Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10, He brings many sons and daughters to glory. Like Jesus, when he was in John 17, his prayer is this, sabi niya, Father, glorify your son. That's why to us today, the glory that will be revealed is not coming from us. The glory depends upon our proximity with the Lord, with the Father. That's why, sabi niya, Christ in you, the hope of Glory. So in Hebrews 2.18, sinabi ron, because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. That's the good news for all of us. Because all of us will be tempted, all of us will fail and will sin. But because of Jesus, there is a new thing, a new beginning for all of us. Because our bodies are not a shell to be discarded so that we can experience mystical union with God. No, you cannot disregard the body. Because the glory of God in us is our humanity. Tandaan niyo po yan. And God wants us to experience His glory in this physical body. In Jesus' incarnation, it means His being in the flesh, it points to the significance of our embodiment or the act of manifesting Christ in a tangible form. That's the very reason Jesus came in flesh. So that we, na mga anak niya, we are going to what? Display the very glory of God that is in us. And many Christians Think of Jesus' first miracle. Remember the first miracle we talk about? The wedding in Cana? It is not a demonstration of His deity. It is the demonstration of His humanity. Diba? Sabi, wala nga sabi, 
Di ba sa nung naubusan yung ano? Nang yung alak, yung wedding, yung kinasal. Sabi niya, bakit niyo ako idadamay dyan? Di ba? Sabi pa nga niya doon sa nanay niya, woman, it's not yet my time. But because Jesus is human. Di ba? That's the first miracle. Ang sinasabi dyan is, it's not a demonstration of His deity, but His humanity. It was private and to affirm His humanity and ours. Private yung wedding na yun. Di ba? Hindi nga alam nung kinasal kung paano naging alak yung tubig na panghugas ng paa. Now, tonight we will talk about the image of God in us. Last week, we talked about the humanity of Jesus. Now, what is the description of the image of God in us? Nakuha po natin. Because we are divine reflections. Each individual bearing the sacred image of God irrespective of our intelligence or virtue. It doesn't matter kung ikay matalino o hindi. Walang kaugnayan ang image of God. Lahat tayo binigyan ng Diyos ng ano? Image of God. We are the divine reflections. Di ba sinabi ko sa inyo bakit galit ang Diyos sa idolatry? Because God made an image here on earth to represent Him. Kaya ang tawag sa image of God is royal representative. He already made an image of Him. Tayo yun. In the moment we make another image, naiinsulto ang Diyos na may gawa sa atin. Tandaan po natin yan. Because our body serves as a vessel, enabling us to interact with the world around us. Because if you don't have body, you are disqualified to live here on earth. The moment mamatay ka, ang katawan mo, what happened? You are disqualified to stay here on earth. You become Elohim. You belong to the realm of the spirit. And because of that, our bodies are the channel through which we come to understand and connect with others. That's why we understand the word. We start to understand what is life. And the only way you can connect with the world, with the people in the world, with the creation of God, is only through your body. And through our body, it allows us to perceive and be perceived. To know and to be known. So our minds, tandaan po natin, are not isolated. It's part of our being. And the minds, they are, po they are formed by the habits we nurture. Kaya yung isip nyo po ngayon is the result of the habits that you nurture. And that habits that we nurture came from our deepest passion, our desire. Like for example, Eve, he desired is to become like God. Hmm. That's why when the devil offer it to him, you eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It doesn't matter kung sa mapalayas doon sa garden. Ang mahalaga lang sa kanya yung kanyang ano, desire. Essentially, we manifest was what we value most. Our desire guides our choices. Everything you make a decision or the choices in life, it's out of your desire, which in turn shape how we see and understand the world. Di ba sabi ni Lord? He honor the desires of your heart. Hmm. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. It's part of being human, that desire. Nakapunan natin. 
So if knowing is in the flesh and rooted in desire, therefore wisdom is engaging well with the word and pursuing the right kind of things. So yun po yung definition of wisdom. We cultivate wisdom in two ways. Okay? Number one, by trusting God as the source of wisdom. Because God revealed His will through His prophets. The scripture also a written record of that revelation. The other method of cultivating wisdom is carefully observing the way the world works and choosing what is good. Example, experience teaches us. The book of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Song of Songs offer wise observation about how to live well. While Proverbs is a part of the inspired scripture, but it does not present itself as a direct revelation, a direct divine revelation. Why? The author of Proverbs, or the philosopher, the sage who wrote this, are not claiming to speak on God's behalf. They are teaching others what they have learned through observation through conversation with others who have handled on life and through their own li life experience, live experience. So, paano sila nabuhay? Yun yung laman ng Proverbs. Experience ng author. Kaya tinan nyo po sa Proverbs 4. Sabi niya, do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom, though it costs all you have. Get understanding. Cherish her, and she will exalt you. Embrace her, and she will honor you. Inalim tulad niya ang wisdom sa babae. At sabi niya, get wisdom at all cost. And when you have that wisdom, she will exalt you, and she will embrace you, and she will honor you. So, wisdom always involves in a choice. Sa ating buhay, sa ating pagkatao o bilang human, wisdom always involves when we are making choices in life. Like for example, the choice in the garden. It was either to trust God, had human's best interest in mind or grasp the more than what God provided. So, Adam and Eve were given a choice. And the wisdom comes from what? It's either from God or from their experience. Like all of us, Solomon was faced daily with choices between trusting God's good commands or charting his own course. That's why in Ecclesiastes, he wrote this. Diba sabi niyo, the last verse, sabi niya, uh, ganito pala ang buhay, sabi niya. Feel God. Oh. Kasi before, he followed the Lord. But eventually, the later in his life, he turned away from God. And that is what we call a choice. Kaya nga yung book of Blisastes, experience niya yun. Sinasabi niya yung kanyang karanasan. So the book of Psalm present the ideal human as humble, not boasting of their strength. Alam niyo ba yun? Makikita niyo si David, he trusted on God. Kaya sabi niya, blessed is the man who trust in the Lord, not in human. Okay? Because God appoints the weak rather than the strong to rule so that we will depend on God's strength rather than our own. Kaya paulit-ulit niya itong ano, sinasabi sa atin, to trust Him. Psalm 8 verse 2, Out of the mouth of babes and infants, 
you have established strength because of your foes to steal the enemy and the avenger. So we need to depend on God's strength. David understand this. That's why he wrote most of the book of Psalm is always trusting God. So being human is about being appointed to rule the creation on God's behalf. Kaya nga ang tawag sa atin, royal representative. So it is not about our qualification. It's about God's empowerment in us. Di ba sabi sa Corinthians, sabi ni Paul, He chose the weak things of this world to confound the mighty. He chose the foolish things of this world to confound those who are wise. Not our own, because we are not enough. You cannot even uh, fulfill His goal, His purpose in life without Him. You know the temptation of Nakash to Eve, like the serpent, he said, sabi niya, if you eat this fruit, you will become like God. The essence of that temptation means that they can rule the earth without God. No, you cannot. Because the path of wisdom is not for the sophisticated. We don't have to register a certain IQ to qualify as wise. Alam niyo ba yun? You don't need a certain IQ para masabi na ikaw ay wise. The key to discovering wisdom is recognizing that we don't have the answer and that we are not in a position to know what's best. Yan ang wisdom. You need to recognize that you don't have the answer. It was Adam and Eve failure to discover wisdom. And what is the result? It breaks the relationship with God and each other and creation because of that. So they decided they knew what was the best. Kaya nung inoper sa kanila ni Nakash, they think they knew the best. And they've been talking to God, di ba? Bakit hindi sila nagtanong? Di ba yun pinagtataka ko? Bakit hindi sila nagtanong sa Diyos? They can even hear and see God. And they fail to ask God. So the path of this wisdom begins and it ends in the fear of the Lord. Diba? Wisdom. Diba? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We need to recognize that we don't have the answer. We don't know. Kaya nga, the more you know God, the more you don't know Him. Now, how to become a human? To be human is to wrestle with a whole range of strong emotions. What are those emotions? Doubt. We experience doubt. The apostles who live and walk with Jesus still doubt him. Peter, James, John, who is very close to Jesus, still doubt. Diba? Fear, anger, sadness, disappointment, hope, celebration, relief, faith, joy, nostalgia, gratitude, and even longing. Napakarami na strong emotion na ating uh, nararanasan. So, human weakness and mortality do not disqualify us from fulfilling our human destiny here on earth. Tandaan nyo po. Our whatever weakness that we have, even our death, uh, our mortality, mamamatay lahat tayo, it does not disqualify us sa ating destiny dito sa lupa. 
dependence on God through honest prayer is the path to wisdom. That's why para makuha ninyo yung wisdom na, hini, na kailangan nyo, you just need to, ano, to be honest in prayer. Why? You don't know. Ecclesiastes 1. All things are wearisome. More than one can say, what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. No one remembers the former generation. And even those yet to come will not be remembered by those who follow them. This is the experience of Solomon. My children's grandchildren will barely know me. Pag si Kaila lumaki, nagkaasawa, nagkaanak, na nagkaasawa uli, they will never remember their, their great-great-great-grandfather. Nakakalimutan na nila. Tulad kayo ngayon, naalala nyo pa ba yung mga great-great-great-grandfather ninyo? Hindi nyo na, uh, wala na kayong idea kung sino yun. And even the name, it will mean nothing to you. That's why the teacher of Ecclesiastes soberly examined human ambition, acknowledging its inherent limitations. Whatever ambitions that you have today, it has limitations, mga kapatid. Because you and I are replaceable, are replaceable, pwede kang palitan. People die all the time. And yet the word persists in its motion, unaffected by their work or by their toil. Kahit mamatay ako, ang mundo hindi titigil sa pag-ikot. The world as a whole will not be affected by my death. Alam niyo ba yun? So if the world can carry on without my contributions, what was the purpose of my efforts? Yan yung sinasabi ni, ano, ni Solomon. Hmm. Kung wala naman palang epekto sa mundo, ang aking contributions as a whole, what is the purpose of my efforts? What impact did they truly have? So the answer is this. Don't spend your life yearning for what you don't have. Kasi madalas, tayo mga Kristiyano, we focus, we pray for the things that we don't have. We forgot to enjoy the things that the Lord has already given us. Instead, enjoy what you have already, mga kapatid. Should enjoy. Kung anong meron ka. Kaya nga, I always encourage people, to, you, please, do travel. Mamasyal kayo. Mag-travel kayo. Locally or internationally. Kasi yung pera nyo, mawawala din yan. Pag namatay ka, hindi nyo mapakinabangan. Makinabang nyo yung mga anak nyo. Why not spend it? Travel. And experience will what? Will enhance the wisdom in your life. So, sabi ni Ecclesiastes 3 verse 13, Being able to eat and drink and find satisfaction in our toil. This is the gift of God. Sa totoo lang, ang dami mga mayayamang, they don't enjoy eating and drinking. Why? Because so much stress, hindi na makakain. Sa dami nilang problema na inaayos. Hmm. And they don't find satisfaction in their work. Hmm. 
Ecclesiastes 9.10 Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. That's why I'm telling people, especially the Christians, work is a ministry. Eh, ang turo lang sa atin noon, ang ministry lang ay nakakonfine sa apat na sulok ng simbahan. Nako niyo po, kung ano yung mga activity sa loob ng simbahan, they, that's the only way they define the ministry to the Lord. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Why? Whatever, whatever things you do, do it for the glory of God. Yun ang sabi ng Panginoon. Bakit? It is a ministry. So since we're all going to die at some point and eventually be forgotten, He wants us to enjoy life doing life along the way. He wants us to enjoy. Hmm. Nagtatrabaho ka nga, may pera ka nga, pero di ka ba nag enjoy That's useless. Treasure the blessings from the Lord. Kapag asapan natin ng blessing, it's not the material thing. Blessing is a spiritual thing that He been placed upon us every day. And you need to acknowledge that blessing of the Lord that is being poured out to you every day. Di ba? Anong sabi ni Lord? You are called to bless so that you can inherit the blessing. Hmm. This is our problem. We are being Uh, nauubos ang ating panahon sa panlangin sa pag-ampo sa sabi sa bisaya humihingi tayo ng blessing in fact the Lord has already blessed you ang gagawin mo na lang sabi ng Bible you are called to bless so that you can inherit blessing for you to inherit the blessing of the Lord you need to start blessing other people Kaya nga ang turo ko ganito, may Facebook ka, may Gcash ka. Kung wala kang Gcash, kumuha ka ng Gcash or Maya. Pagkatapos, yung kaibigan mo na nagbe-birthday, malalaman mo naman sa Facebook kung birthday niya. Padalhan mo ng Gcash. The amount is irrelevant. Tandaan niyo po, wala pang naghirap sa ibabaw ng lupa. Wala pang taong naghirap dahil siya i-giver. That's part of enjoying and treasuring the blessing of God. Share it, mga kapatid. Follow your passions and find fulfillment in what you do. Yan yung pinagagawa sa atin ni Lord. Hmm. that is being human and the glory of God is in our humanity what is your passions magluto hmm. gawin mo masarap kang kumain magnegosyo ka ng restaurant hmm. di ba so the words continuity isn't dependent on your achievement tandaan nyo Kaya nga sabi ni Duterte, di ba? Kwento niya. Sabi niya daw sa nanay niyang teacher, tama na yung 75, makapasa lang. Oh. Para sa kanya, siguro naisip niya na hindi naman dependent sa, sa achievement niya ang, para ang, mund, baka, ang mundo ay tumigil pag hindi siya nakakuha ng 95. No? Sometimes may mga magulang na pinipressure din yung mga anak na dapat mataas ang grade na makuha nila. Eh kung hindi man sila ganun ang kanilang uh, level ng IQ nila, eh huwag mo pilitin dapat. Imagine mo si President Duterte nga, 75 lang eh. Naging lawyer pa, naging presidente pa. O. So wala yan dun sa, ano, sa achievement mo. Because light mysteries can be mysterious, tandaan nyo. It is marked by cycles of seeming stagnation and injustice. 
Kaya nga lagi sinasabi nila, life is unfair. Oh. Despite the apparent meaninglessness, God remains sovereign. Tandaan niyo po yan. Even though we don't understand life, God remains sovereign. Siya pa rin ang may control. That's why you need to trust His timing. He knows what He's doing. In the meantime, you need to immerse yourself in a meaningful work. Cherish love and celebrate. Enjoy. Hmm. Kaya, advice ko, hanap ka ng magandang restaurant, kumain, mag-enjoy, kumain. Hmm. Cherish love. Share, receive love from the Lord. Share it with others. There is no need to be holier than God. I'm not saying na we don't walk in holiness. Pero magkaiba yung you are being tortured day by the night and day na dapat maging holy ka. Mga kapatid, the very seed of God is in us. And you know what will happen? The seed of God is in us. Sabi ng 1 John chapter 4. And that seed means in Greek, sperma. That is the sperm of God in us. So what will happen? It will produce God's holiness. Alam nyo ba yun? You don't need to struggle. Because like father, like son. If you're a son, you will always look like your father in heaven. Nakuha niyo po? You have to accept and delight in His gifts with joy. Di ba sabi ng Bible, He is the vine, we are the branches. And what is the work of the vine or the branches to bear fruit? Oh. As long as you are connected to the vine, you will always will have root in you. Kasi ang trabaho lang ng vine o ng, ng branches, magbear ng fruit. Trabaho ng roots ng vine ang magproduce ng fruit. Kaya wag mong pilitin na magproduce ka ng holiness dahil hindi mo kaya yan. It is only the seed through the seed of God that is inside of you. And you will see when you focus on God, being close to God or proximity to God, closer to God, the more you are far from sin. But the more you focus on sin, you become, you become drawn by sin day by day. Because my identity finds its foundation in being created in the image of God. You know, aking identity. I am created in the image of God. It's an honor not achieved through any effort of our own. Hindi na achieve natin yan dahil may ginawa tayo. Wala. Lahat ito ay libring ibinigay ng Panginoon sa atin. Kaya napunta sa atin, we just receive it. Now, the question of Solomon, is life really meaningless? Hmm. Sabi ng Ecclesiastes 1-2, Meaningless, meaningless, say the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Now, yan ba talagang ibig sabihin? The teacher in Ecclesiastes used a metaphor to convey how difficult it is to grasp the meaning of life. Yun ang ibig sabihin niya, nung meaningless, meaningless. It's a metaphor that says, that conveys how difficult to grasp the meaning of life. In Hebrew, it said it was Hevel. And the meaning of Hevel in English is vapor. Kaso lang pinag-translate ng mga translator ng meaningless. Remember, it's a metaphor, okay? To call everything Hevel 
does not mean that life is devoid of meaning. Rather, it indicates that the meaning of life is beyond our ability to fully grasp. Hindi ba may mga nangyayari sa buhay ng tao? Good people suffer evil things. Oh. Marami, marami mga tao nakakaranas ng mga pangit na bagay sa buhay. Pero mababait naman ito mga tao na ito. And then we question God, why? Di ba? Ecclesiastes advises us to embrace life's journey and appreciate its simple joys like food, drink, and companionship given by our Creator. So, ganun lang daw kasimple ang buhay. And the, remember wisdom, no? Dalawang klase ang wisdom, ang source ng wisdom. One is from God. The other one is from the experience. And Book of Ecclesiastes is an experience of Solomon. And they're telling us how this life become favor, vapor I mean. Bakit seemingly meaningless ang buhay, sabi, sabi nung author. Rather than endlessly chasing indefinable goals, consider work as a blessing, providing its own sense of fulfillment and joy. Yeah, the work that we do every day, it brings joy. It brings a sense of fulfillment. Like for example, I teach almost every day I'm teaching. Sunday, Monday, tomorrow night, I have a webinar I will be teaching. And then we'll go to other places in Mindanao to teach the pastors. Oh. And I enjoy doing it. Kahit mapagod, it brings what? Fulfillment and joy. Life is not meaningless. Yun ang ibig sabihin ni, ano, ni Ecclesiastes. We simply aren't in a position to completely grasp its meaning. It is not meaningless, but it means we, don't, we are not in a position to understand it completely. Kung anong ibig sabihin ng buhay. So to be human is to live with fractured relationship. Alam niyo ba yun? Physical limitations. And all the disappointments that come with living in a world stained by sin. Kasi itong mundong uh, tinitirhan natin ay stained by sin. And because it's stained by sin, nasira po ito. Di ba? There are fractured relationship. Sa pamilya na lang, di ba? Hindi magkasundo. Hmm. Physical limitation, may sakit ka. Oh. And all the disappointment, mararanasan mo yan. So humans have a natural desire to understand life. And one way of understanding life is through pain. The pain that we experience every day. And that pain is part of being human. Even Jesus himself experienced those, those things. Nung siya ay nabubuhay pa. Di ba? And through the pain, we understand life. And one thing of the pain is this. Pain is much harder to manage when we cannot see its purpose. The question always is this. Why good people suffer? Oh. Eh, yung mga masasama, hindi nagsasuffer. Di ba? Kaya madalas, yung pain, kapag alam natin yung purpose, madali natin itong tanggapin. Pero kapag hindi mo alam yung purpose ng pain, ang hirap. Di ba? 
eh madalas sinasabi natin no pain, no gain. Yet when pain lacks explanation, we wrestle with it. Di ba? We wrestle with, the, with, it, with it. When, when, when the pain comes in, to our life. Oh. Unexplained suffering is capable of pushing us to the edge of stupidity. Alam niyo ba yun? Marami mga tong gumagawa ng mga stupid things. Why? Because of the pain. The unexplained suffering na kanilang nararanasan. And the presence of a greater purpose or the assurance of a positive outcome greatly impacts how we perceive and endure suffering. Kaya ito ang maganda. Pag alam mo ang purpose ni Lord sa buhay mo, you can endure suffering. Diba? Sa mag-asawa, diba? Pag sila ay nag-engage. Yung boyfriend and girlfriend, they're engaged. Diba? Yung lalaki magbibigyan ng sing-sing. Ang tawag doon, engagement ring. Pag nag na sila, magbibigyan uli ng sing-sing. Ang tawag doon, wedding ring. Paglipas ng ilang taon, dumana sila ng pain, di ba? Ang susunod na sing-sing ay suffering. May ring pa rin. And because there is suffering, magtiis na lang. Kaya meron pang susunod na sing-sing. Enduring. Pag di sila nakatiis, alam nyo ang susunod. Boxing ring. Mag-aaway na sila. Humans are not in a position to understand God's ways. Alam nyo ba yun? Example is hope. Is Job. Job is a righteous man. Di ba? He fears God. Sabi ng Biblia. Pero may nangyari sa buhay niya. He was accused by the devil in the courts of heaven. Namatay yung mga anak niya. Nawala yung kanyang kayamanan. Oo. Oh. At he was accused by his, uh, by his friends. Hmm. Tapos sabi ng asawa niya, sumpa mo ng Diyos at ano, magpakamatay ka na lang. Oh. Instead yung asawa niya, supportahan siya. Hmm. It brought him to that edge of foolishness. Di ba? To the point, Hanggang ilang chapter yon, I think that's the longest chapter na silent ang Diyos. Sa Job 38 lang, nagsimulang magsalita ang Diyos. I think Job chapter 4, hindi na nagsalita ang Diyos. Chapter 5 hanggang doon, sa chapter 38, silent ang Diyos. At doon nagsalita ang Diyos, hindi rin ipinaliwanag ni Lord ang sarili niya. At hindi rin ipinaliwanag kay Job why he suffered those things in life. Why God does not owe us an explanation. Kaya pag binagyari sa buhay mo, please don't ask him. Unless he wants to explain it to you. But he does not owe us any explanation. He simply invites us to trust him. Yun lang yun. Inanya niya lang bawat sa atin o magtiwala ka lang sa akin. Anak kita, tatay mo ako. And if you have that relationship, you know God as your father, you can trust Him. Whatever happens sa mundo, sa palibot mo, God can protect you. Di ba? Remember Meshach, Sedrak, Abednego? pinu-worship sila doon sa statue ni Nebuchadnezzar. Sabi niya, no, we will not worship. 
because He's not our God. Kahit hindi kami iligtas ang aming Diyos, hindi pa rin kami luluhod dyan. O, di ba? Bad things happen to good people. Why? Because we live in a world damaged by brokenness or by sin. Iyan ang sagot dyan. Bakit bad things happen to good people? It's because the world is what? Damaged by sin. We suffer the consequences of our own sin. Not only our own sin, even the sin of people, of other people, that we've never been even met. Look, COVID-19, sino may gawa niyan? COVID-19 is not a, uh, a virus from an animal. No, it's a laboratory-made virus yan. Oh. Because of these greedy pharmaceutical companies. Oh. Ginawa tayong ano? Uh, anong tawag doon? Guinea pigs. Experiment. Oh. Tatlong taon nagsara ang ekonomiya natin. Almost kulang na lang magsara ang buong mundo because of that. We suffer the consequences of the sin of other people. At pinilit pa tayo magpabaksin ng bakuna na hindi man natin, na hindi naman sigurado na makaka-protect makaka sa iyo. Hmm. Diba? We suffer. Three years tayo nagsapad dyan. Our society is shaped by people who act out of greed and selfishness. Like our government. Tingnan niyo po, ang daming mga tao sa gobyerno. They act out of greed and selfishness. Gusto lang nila, ituloy lang nila yung kanilang agenda, yung gusto lang nila. In the expense of other people. Oh. Kaninong tax ang ginagamit nila, inuubos nila sa corruption. Atin yun, di man ibinabalik sa atin. Di ba? That's why we can never fully understand why things happen the way they do. We need to learn to live with the unknown. That's one thing that we, we need to, to understand. Another point, all human will die. One thing that's certain about being human is that we will all die. At pag namatay ka na, makakalimutan ka na, maniwala kayo sa akin. Di ba? Because we are all mortal. Sabi ng, nung nagkasala si Adan at Eva, sa Genesis chapter 3 verse 9 ba yun? From dust we came, and to dust will return. So if we spent more time thinking about this, would it change the way we live? Yes. It would change the way we live. Knowing that we won't live forever motivate us to make the most of time that we have. Hindi tayo magsasayang ng mga oras na yan. We will use every moment na yan para doon sa purpose na binigay sa iyo ng Panginoon. All the resources that God has blessed you will be given to that. No? Di ba merong uh, tawag dyan? Eclipse, America and Canada. Hindi naman kita sa Pilipinas. Apat na araw daw, sabi nila. E may nagtanong sa akin, at natatakot siya, baka daw ito na ang katapusan ng mundo. Sabi ko, kapatid, alam mo, kung katapusan na yan ng mundo, isang hulog lang ng uh, nuclear bomb, all of us will disintegrate. Di mo mararamdaman yun eh. In a split second, you die. You're already in heaven. Hmm. Sabi ko, kung nag-aalala ka, ibigay mo na lang sa akin yung kayamanan mo, gagamitin natin para sa building of the key, of houses of prayer. Because a lot of people are, you know, afraid of all those things, especially na babasa nila sa Biblia. That will be persecutions, there will be tribulations. Yes, it will come. 
But the thing is, God is so powerful. He is sovereign. He can protect you. And even if not, God will protect us. Of course, you will die. And when you die, you go to heaven. What's the problem? Hmm. Sabi nung aming kaibigan na Korean, sabi niya, life is very itchy. Recognizing our limitation is humbling. It reminds us that we are not superhuman. Tandaan niyo po, the likeness, the image of God na ibinigay sa atin is to be conformed to the image of Christ. To that, that, that image of Christ is not His divinity, but His humanity. God doesn't demand beyond our capacity. Tandaan niyo po yan. He will not demand beyond your capacity. Why? The reason why na stress tayo, if we are overwhelmed, it is due to say, it is due to saying yes to non-divine task. Oo ka lang ng oo doon sa mga bagay na hindi ipinagagawa sa iyo ng Diyos. When I say divine task, non-divine task, ibig sabihin, uh, hindi ito yung mga spiritual na bagay lang. Anything, any task that is not given to you by God, that is non-divine task. Tanong, yung ginagawa mo mag ngayon, ay pinagagawa sa iyo ng Diyos. Kung hindi, bitawan mo na yun. Ang gawin mo lang, yung pinagagawa sa iyo ng Panginoon. B. Setting unrealistic standards. You know, <laughs> natawa nga ako eh, when I was still a young pastor, we have a missionary from America and he start to prophesy and I don't know if it comes from God pero this is his prophecy sabi dun sa isa naming leader sa simbahan sabi niya your standard is too high of looking for a man na mapapangasawa mo sabi niya even God cannot meet that standard natawa ako eh. Even God Himself cannot meet the standard. Ang ibig sabihin, we should not set unrealistic standard. C. Or shouldering burdens meant for the community. Sometimes yung sinushoulder mong burdens ay hindi lang para sa sa'yo. Para yan sa buong Pilipinas or sa buong community. O halimbawa, you're so concerned of basura. ba? Eh, hindi yan ano. Hindi yan burdens ng isang tao lang. Burdens yan ng ano. Ng buong community. Pag sinuryoso mo in a sense na ikaw lang gumagawa niyan, ay mapapagod ka. Another example is about the corruption in the government. Hindi yan magagawa natin tayo lang. Sa totoo nga, ang hirap nga ipakulong yung mga taong korup eh. Alam niyo bakit? Hindi magko- ay yung mga nasa gobyerno, hindi magkukorup ng isang milyon, dalawang milyon. Ang style nila magkukorup sila ng hanggat kaya nila. Billion ang way ng kanilang korupsyon. Bakit? Kasi pag nahuli sila, may pambayad sila sa abogado at panlagay doon sa mga nasa uh, judicial, nasa gobyerno, para hindi sila makulong. So the issue of the government, it's, it's a burden for the community, for the Philippines. Hindi lang issue mo yan. And the moment you take that burden for yourself alone, nako, you will be overwhelmed. Magagalit ka na sa mundo at magagalit ka na sa mga tao na yun. So being God's image does not exempt you from suffering in death. Tandaan niyo po ah. 
the Lord has predestined us, Romans 8, 29, to be conformed to the image of His Son. Sabi sa Ephesians, unto a perfect man. Sa Galatians, until Christ be formed in us. And the Christ, the image of Christ that God wants to be in us, it's not His divinity but His humanity. Tandaan niyo po. You are going to die whether you like it or not. You are not indispensable. Because God's purpose for creation are much larger than one person. So, human mortality and the brokenness of our world means that we need to learn to live joyfully within limits. Kaya nga, di ba, sa Garden of Eden, naglagay si Lord ng limitations. He gave restraint to Adam and Eve. Sabi niya, you can eat every fruit of the trees in the garden except for this tree. Why? There is limit. You can enjoy life, but there is limit. Now, becoming who we are. You know the eagle story? Yung parma, nakakuha siya ng itlog ng agila. So, para ma mahatch ito, nilagay niya doon sa turkey na may mga itlog din. So, nung naghatch yung ano, yung mga itlog ng turkey kasama yung itlog ng eagle. And habang lumalaki yung mga turkey, lumalaki din yung eagle, at napansin niya, magkaibang itsura niya sa itsura ng mga turkey na ito. And he never tried to, to soar or to fly. Kasi ang alam niya, katulad lang din siya nung nanay niya na, ano, na, na turkey. He just walk on the soil, paikot-ikot lang siya, never tried na lumipad. Kasi yung mga turkey, hindi naman lumilipad yun. Takbo lang ng takbo. Okay, and one day, may nakita siyang eagle na kamukha niya. At nakita niya nag-soar lumipad. And then he tried to do it. When he tried to do it, he was able to soar in the sky. Every individual possesses the potential of an eagle. Yet societal, societal or the conditioning of our society often restrict us to a state of waddling and pecking instead of soaring. We just peck. Yung ganun lang, naglalakad lang, katulad ng isang turkey. Never tried na lumipad. Oh. Kasi, you have been taught na ganyan ka lang. Na ikaw ay turkey, hindi ka eagle. Every human is made in God's image. That is our identity. We are made in the image of God. And we possess kinship with God, kamag-anak ka ng Diyos. Which requires a capacity to relate with Him. Di ba? He is our Father and we are His sons. Oh. Kinship ang tawag doon. In a kingdom, ang merong mataas na pwesto sa kingdom ay yung mga kamag-anak ng hari. Kingdom is all about family business. So, but rather than leaning into our identity, what happens, we are corrupted by the deceitful desire na namanan natin kay Adan at Eva. At tandaan nyo po, we have not lost our identity. Kahit si Adan at Eva, nung sila'y nagkasala, hindi na lost ang identity nila. It remains. The image of God is still remain in them. The problem is, we are not living it out the way God intended. That image Naandyan, pero hindi nabubuhay doon sa intention ng Diyos. 
Hebrews 1.3, ano sabi ron? The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being. Jesus Christ is the exact representation of the Father. And because of His closeness to the Father, what happens? He reveals the glory of God. Same true with us. The more you are close with God the Father, the more the glory of God will be shining on you. So, many concluded that because of Jesus' divinity, only Jesus is the image of God, while the rest of us are made according to or in the image of God. Galatians 1.15 The Son is the image of the invisible God. Jesus, referring to Jesus. So when the New Testament tells us that Jesus is the image of God, is that that say, it does not say that we are not God's image. Jesus' status as God's image is not connected to His divinity. Tandaan niyo po. Rather, it points to His incarnation. His becoming flesh. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng image of God. The image of God that the Bible is talking about, Jesus, is it points to His incarnation. So by virtue of being human, Jesus is also the image of God as we are. Nakon niyo So you need to understand this image that the Lord has given us. No nagkasala ang tao, hindi na wala ang image of God. It remains in us. Kaso lang, it does not, the glory does not manifest because the ikabud, the, the, the doxa, live, lives us. Kaya nung naborgen tayo uli, we are being connected again to the Father, what happens? The more you are close to God, the more that glory manifests. So the difference is that Jesus did not surrender to sinful desire. Yun lang ang kaibahan natin sa ating Panginoon Iso Kristo. Adam and Eve surrendered to the sinful desire. Hanggang sa, hanggang ngayon, sa atin. We live here on earth, we surrender to the sinful desire. And as we contemplate the Lord's glory, we are transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory. The more you behold Him, di ba sabi niya? So the glory will only come upon you when you are in a close proximity with God, kapag ikaw ay malapit. Hmm. And what will happen, it will transform you into His image with ever-increasing glory. So that's why we must undergo transformation. So we can reflect who we truly are. And the moment you got born again, nagsimula na yung transformation na gusto mangyari ng Diyos sa buhay natin. Colossians 2, 9 and 10. Christ not only show us what it looks like to be human, but He invite us all into that fullness. Gusto ni Lord na maranasan natin yung fullness ng pagiging tao with the glory of God manifesting in our life. Oh, Colossians 2, 9 and 10. For in Him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. You see? The fullness of the deity, the, 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 the glory, dwells in a physical body, in the body of Jesus. And you have been filled in Him. So who is the head of all rule and authority? So we can never be ourselves outside of Christ. You cannot become who we are outside Christ Jesus. Because the only hope for our glory is the Christ that is inside of us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So the pursuit of personal identity fails short unless grounded in our connection to God. 
the glory that the Bible refers to na i-reveal sa atin, it's always connected. It's to God. And our purpose is to reflect His glory to the world. Nakita niyo po. His purpose is to reveal, to reflect His glory to the world. It's our responsibility to become in a close proximity with God the Father so that glory that He has will be transferred upon us. So each individual shaped their own identity and our distinct traits are among the most beautiful aspects of humanity. Distinct traits. Each one of us has his own personality. That's why we don't need to copy other people. You're distinct. You're beautiful. You are guapo, guapa. That's why you don't need to compare yourself from other people. You have distinct personality and traits. And that is the most beautiful aspect of being a human. However, God is the frame reference for human identity. Ang frame of reference natin ay ang Diyos, the Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's why there is what we call painful work of dying. Sabi ni Paul, I die to myself daily. Para ano? So the result in greater glory as we become more and more like Jesus. Kaya may nagtanong, sabi niya, why do we need to forgive? Because Jesus tells us to forgive. Sabi niya, to forgive from your heart. Forgiveness is what? Paying the debt that you did not owe. So pag may nakagawa sa'yo ng kasalanan, ikaw na nasaktan, ikaw ang magbabayad ng utang na hindi mo utang. Kasi yan ang ginawa ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo when He died on the cross. He paid the debt that He did not owe. Is there any reward for, for forgiveness? Yes. What is the reward? You become more like Jesus. That is the painful work of dying to self. Every day you die because every day, every day you deny yourself and you let God, the one who reigns in your life. So human dignity does not depend on one's own ability or self-awareness. Tandaan niyo po, yung dignidad natin bilang tao, hindi nakasalalay sa ating abilidad, sa kakayahan natin. The essence of our soul finds true support solely in Christ. Only in Christ. Kaya nga, ulit-ulit ko sinasabi, Christ in you, the hope of glory. In Him, we are holy, holy accepted and entirely forgiven. Sa kanya, accepted tayo niya. Ano mang klaseng kahinaan meron ka, you are accepted and entirely forgiven by God. That is our frame of reference of our human identity. So to bear, to bear the image of God implies a familial bond. With Him, so we are what we call members of God's family. He is our Father and we are His sons. Ephesians 1.5 God chose us for adoption as sons before the foundations of the world. Diba sabi niya, but as many as believe Him to them, He gave the right to become children of God. Now we are children of God. Why do we need to become sons? If we are already sons, how can still be adopted? The Greek word for son is huyutesia, nang ibig sabihin, placing as a son. Sa Roman Empire, ganito pong ginagawa na sa Greek, they adopted this one from the Greek. 
ay yung tatay marami itong anak. At mamimili siya dun sa mga anak niya. Kung sino yung kanyang magiging firstborn or magiging uh, 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 mag-inherit na kanyang position, na kanyang business. So, hahanap siya doon sa mga anak niyang yun. Madalas, itong mga mayayaman na ito, hindi lang sa asawa may anak, sa ibang asawa, sa katulong, marami ang mga anak. And out of those anak na yun, pipili siya. For the reason, one of the reason is this, yung mortality rate ng mga bata noon, mataas. Kaya kung minsan hindi umaabot ng 10 years old na mamatay. Diba? So, what they did, They have to, you know, anak ng anak, anak ng anak. So from that point, pag umindad siya ng 30 years old, hahanap siya ng ano, uh, mula doon na qualified na mag, mamamahala ng negosyo niya. And then dadali niya sa isang part at ipipreset niya sa kanyang mga uh, kaibigan at kanegosyo. Lalagyan niya ng toga. Yung toga. Diba? May, may sas and then may toga. Ang tawag doon, placing as a son. At sasabihin niya, ito yung anak ko. You can now deal with him kahit wala ako. Pwede na siyang pumerma ng cheque ko. Because he is already a son. In a Jewish culture, ang tawag nila doon, bar mitzvah. Diba? Placing of a son. That's why when Jesus reached the age of 30, that's the start of his ministry. And the first thing that happens is what? The baptism in the Jordan River. And the father spoke to him. Sabi niya, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. It is the placing as a son. When we get born again, we become children of God. Because in Galatians chapter 4, children... It's no different from a slave. You need to mature. You need to become son. In Roman law, they prescribe a formal process of adoption by which the chosen heir would become a legal son with all the rights and privileges that a natural child would enjoy. It's a placing of a son. In, in adoption, in the Philippine setting, the adoption is from one family to another family. Here, ang adoption sa Romans ay you will become a legal son kahit hindi ka kadugo. Hmm. Roman adoption was almost always something that happened to an adult, not a child. Hmm. Nangyayari ito, sa mga matatanda, hindi sa mga bata. Even a Roman emperor could use the adoption process to pick up a successor. Iba, Roman emperor, sa anak niya, wala siyang nakitang qualified, hahanap siya sa iba, and is going to place him in adoption process. Because if his own sons were unfit to rule the empire after him, he will look for other. And the process is they called huyotesia or adoption. Some of the best known emperors, alam niyo ba, gained their status by adoption. Augustus, Tiberius, Claudius, Nero, and even Marcus Aurelius. These emperors were adopted. They are not really from the blood of the previous emperor. That's the reason in Romans 8.21, the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage, bondage to decay and brought into freedom and glory of the children of God. Tapasin nyo? That the creation is groaning, waiting to be set free. And the one that would set free the creation is what? The glory of the children of God. Hindi sinabi ng Diyos, the glory of God. The glory of the children. That's why, in these last days, He is raising up 
bringing many sons, sabi ng Hebrews 2.10, bringing many sons to glory. Because the creation is part of the plan of God. God want to liber liberate the creation. And not only the creation, but, uh, but we ourselves, who have the first fruit of the Spirit grown inwardly, as we wait eagerly for the adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. See? Even us, we are also groaning. And we are waiting for what? The adoption. Placing us as a son. Hmm. Kaya from a child, we need to be promoted. We need to become sons. Ang malungkot maraming kristyano sa simbahan. They're all children, but they are not sons. And the only way you can walk as a son, when you know the Father, when you encounter God as your Father. Our bodies will be redeemed. Kasama yun. Sa iriredeem ni Lord. Creation clearly still matters. Ang malungkot, sa simbahan, dalawa lang ang focus. God, human. Kaya mapansin nyo, ang preaching lang is tungkol lang sa Diyos at tungkol sa tao. Walang, hindi pinag-uusapan yung tungkol sa creations. Paano marirestore ang creations? Paano marirestore ang gobyerno natin na full of corruption? Walang nag-uusap niyan. Eh, nagpipray nga tayo ng ano eh. Ng anong tawag doon? Ng righteous government. Pero ayaw naman natin makailam sa gobyerno. Dahil ang mindset natin, there is what they call dichotomy. Hiwalay ang gobyerno sa spiritual. No. That's part of the creation. Because all authority comes from God. And who is the one taking advantage of that authority over the earth. The devil and the human agents of the kingdom of darkness. So, remember, we are what? Royal representative. We represent God within creation and cooperate with God to bring redemption of that creation. So our future includes the redemption and the glorification of our bodies as we experience full adoption into God's royal family. We will be adopted. So as the firstborn, di ba sabi nun, uh, Israel is the firstborn. And tayo din, we are part of Israel, spiritual Israel, we are firstborn. Christ is the ear of the end times family of God or eschatological family of God. Jesus is the ear. We are joint ears with Christ. So through participation in Christ, we are included in Jesus' status as ear. Yun ang ibig niyang sabihin. Kung si Kristo ay tagapagmana at sinabi niya na tayo kasamang tagapagmana ni Kristo, as sinabi niya, we are seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. So, to be an ear, you need to be a son. Now, as a son, you have a work, and we will end here. Your work is to defeat the strong man that is operating in your territory. Your life, your destiny, your calling is a territory. Di ba sabi ni Lord, yung demonyo na umalis sa isang tao, babalik siya, may kasamang pito na mas masama sa kanya. Pag nakita niya yung teritoryo, ay walang nakatira. Malinis at walang nakatira. So in other words, the Lord is telling us our life is a territory or a property. Bukod doon sa ating mga geographical areas that we are in, we are located. 
your life, your destiny is also what? A territory. And the enemy wants to squat in the territory. And our work is to evict the squatter. Because the spirit dwelling in the unseen realm, those who have turned from the path of divine order, falling short in their intended purpose of fulfilling the mandate of the creation. So, anong ginawa nila? They married the daughters of men. Genesis chapter 6, di ba? At nagulo ang mundo kasi nakialam sila. Question, are you reflecting the Creator's desire to bring order that promotes the flourishing creation? The problem of sin is they distorted the creation. It is not only because Adam and Eve partake the forbidden fruit. Hindi lang ho yun ang rebellion. There are three rebellions mentioned in the Bible. The first one is Adam and Eve. The second one is when the daughters of men, when the sons of God, the fallen sons of God, marry the daughters of men at nagkaroon sila ng anak na ang tawag ay nipilin. At yung mga nipilim na yun, yung may mga giants na binabanggit sa Biblia. At nung ng baha, ano nangyari? Namatay sila. But their spirit remains here on earth. And because of that, nagulo ang mundo. That's why the world is so wicked. The third one is in Tower of Babel, when God divided nations at nilagay ng Diyos ang mga sons of God na mag sa mga nations. But the problem is the sons of God did a lousy job. They received worship and they become fallen sons of God. And in Psalm 82 verse 1 to 6, God judges the sons of God. Hinatula ng Diyos ito mga sons of God na ito. But the thing is, andito pa sila sa lupa. Is still operating. Kaya, some of us will ask the question, eh bakit hindi na lang kaya dinala ni Kristo nung siya umakyat sa langit? Hindi na lang niya binitbit itong mga espiritu na ito at tinapo niya sa impyerno. Bakit niya hinayaan na maiwan dito sa lupa at mag ng habok at manira ng buhay ng tao? The only answer is this. God has given the earth to men. We, only the, we are the only sole authority na binigyan ng Diyos na magpalayas ng mga kapangyarihan na yan. Powers, rulers, and authorities. They are there. They are operating in our territories. Hmm. At ang tagyan ang ating mandate, palayasin ito mga rulers na ito. They are illegitimate. They are squatters. Hmm. Sabi niya, things in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones, powers, rulers, all things have been created through him and for him. Ito yung mga pollen sana ito, binigyan ni Lord ito before ng authority sa mga nations. Hmm. Kaya naalala mo doon sa Daniel chapter 10, di ba? Nung nag si Daniel, 21 days bago dumating ang sagot. Bakit? Archangel Gabriel was hostage by the prince of Persia. Hindi alam ni Daniel yon na may ganong warfare na nangyayari sa langit. It takes two against one. God has to bring in Archangel Gabriel to defeat the prince of Persia. There is a prince, a ruler in our nations, seated there in Malacanang and in other four cardinal directions, north, south, west, east of the Philippines. Nasa mga probinsya yan, seated there in their throne. And our job is to evict them. Palayasin sila doon sa kanilang ano, pagkakaupo 
sa mga trono na yan. So any spiritual being that does not actively carry out God's will, demons or otherwise, is in active rebellion against the created purpose of God. They are in rebellion. Christ's purpose was to reconcile himself all things, whether things on earth and things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Oh. Ano ang ginawa ng Panginoon? Colossians 2.15 He being disarmed the power of authority and authorities. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Ganun ito po ang nangyari sa ating mga kaaway. Kaaway ng Diyos, yung mga fallen sons. These are the spirit beings. We commonly known as angels. These are the fallen sons headed by Lucifer, the devil. Sa Romans, After they defeated an army, pinaparada niya ito, yung general, para makita ng ano, tao. They made a public spectacle of them. Sasabihin ng general, o oh, wala nang kapangyarihan ang mga yan. Hindi na niya kaya kayong ibuli. Now, bago sila iparada, ito ang ginagawa nila. Pinuputula ng ano? Thumb. Para they cannot hold any weapon. Di ba? Subukan nyo na walang thumb. Di ba? Mahina ang gripping. Hindi lang yung sa kamay, pati yung sa paa. Yung toe nila, puputuloy din para hindi makatakbo. And then ipaparada sila. At sasabihin ng general, kahit sila magkaisa, they will have no power against you. Kasi tinanggalan na sila ng mga... They cannot even use... They, do, they cannot even use a knife. Di nila kaya mag-hold ng knife. Nakuha niyo po. Yan yung ibig sabihin niya ni Jesus Christ. He made a public spectacle of them. Pinarada na niya yung kaaway. Sabi niya, it is finished. Pero ito ang tanong, bakit ang daming kristyano, ang feeling nila, si satanas ay makapangyarihan pa din? What was the reason? Isa lang, absent sila sa parada. Hindi nila nakita yung ginawa ng Diyos na ipinarada na ang kaaway. That's why, ang feeling nila, ang kaaway ay victorious pa rin. No? Nagkukunyari lang yan. Is already defeated. So to be human is to know our place in the created order. We are placed here on earth. And this spirit being are not to be here. They are illegal squatters. They need to be evicted. And the only way you can evict the squatter here on earth is only you go to the court. You file a case. Same true in heaven. You go to the courts of heaven and make a petition or submission against this spirit that is destroying your city. You cannot just shout at them. Hindi sila susunod. Pero kapag nagsumbong ka dun sa just judge in heaven, I tell you, God will send His army to arrest these squatters. God has appointed both humans and angels to rule over our respective domains. There is a respective domains. We are here on earth and the angels in, in the realm of the spirit. But the problem is, these angels in the realm of the spirit, they cross the boundary. You can read it in 1 Peter and Jude. Human and angelic rebellion disrupted God's good order in creation. And it spread sin rather than faithfully representing God's rule. So yan po ang nangyari. It disrupted God's plan or order. Kaya nung dumating si Kristo, ibinabalik lang niya yung order. Nire-restore niya lang ito. Jesus' death not only brought about our forgiveness, reconciling us to our Father in heaven, But it is a signal 
the end to all rebellion, both sin and unseen. Dito nagsimula na lahat ng rebellion ay pinarusahan na ng Diyos at tinapos na ng Diyos lahat ng rebellion. Both on the unseen realm and the sin realm. Another example in Isaiah 24:23, The moon will be dismayed, the sun ashamed, for the Lord Almighty will reign on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before its elders with great glory. Isaiah is speaking of rulers who have usurped God's glory to their own rule. That's the sun or the moon that is referring to. He is not referring to the physical sun or to the physical moon. Isaiah is referring to what? To the fallen sun or the spirit being. God is destroying the demonic forces in the heavens and stripping away the power, the upper layer of the cosmos in order to expose the earth to divine judgment. Remember, when you talk about judgment, it's not only negative. Judgment means the decision of a judge. And the, the reinstatement of God's glorious rule will put this impostor to shame. It will end. Like this guy in Davao claiming to be the appointed son, it will end, I tell you. God will cut. It is claiming to, the, to be the father and the owner of the earth. God will not tolerate those things because he is not going to give glory to man like that. That glory belongs to him only. And everything will end. Every imposter will bring, will, God will brought to shame. If you are troubled by corrupt governments and hostile spiritual forces, God will unseat and destroy every rebellious entity. Tandaan niyo po. God will end it. Sinabi ni Lord, you cannot transact the house unless you bind the strong man. In every territory that we are in, there are strong men. At yan ang trabaho natin mga kapatid. Kasi kahit anong gawin yung ministry, it will not succeed until the strong man is neutralized. And there is only one way doing that. We call it legislative prayer or prayer in the courts or prayer in the divine council. You're troubled by the corrupt governments? Bring it before the just judge of heaven. It will end. the fallout of the rains will be obliterated and the creation restored to the state God intended. He is in a process of restoration everything, of everything that He created. Not only humans, but the creation itself. So those of us who are not swept away by God's judgment will be ushered with joy into His renewed creation. Summary, to be human is to be in the flesh. In the image of Christ that he said in Romans chapter 8 verse 29, that we are predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ. That is the image of his humanity or incarnation. When Christ became man, Ganun magiging ganun tayo. Our desire shape what we know and how we know it. That's why, sabi ni Lord, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. The very thing that God wants is to connect. You need to connect. With him because everything starts with a desire. Even your decisions start with your desire. Human weakness and mortality do not disqualify us from fulfilling our human destiny. 
and dependence on God through honest prayer is the path to wisdom. I put that honest prayer. Because sometimes our prayer is what? Superficially. Ecclesiastes address our discouragement by urging us to find joy in the journey rather than the constantly yearning for what we lack. A lot of people are being, they spend much of their time to prayer by yearning for the things that they lack. Eh, ano kung wala kang iPhone? Bakit? Hindi ka ba makakapag, ano? Makakapag-call nang wala kang iPhone? Eh ba? Magastos kaya yan? O, oh, iPhone 11, iPhone 12, iPhone 13, 15, susunod 16. So, pag may 15 ka, di tatapon mo na o bibenta mo na yung ano, para lang makuha mo yung 16. Kasi status symbol na yan eh. Di ba? That's why people are so discouraged every day. Ang dami nilang nararanasang discouragement sa buhay. The book of Job invites us to trust God when we cannot see the larger purpose of our, for our suffering. As a human, you will always suffer pain. Normal yan. And God is in no obligation to explain to us kung ano yung nangyari sa'yo. Madating, hindi ka nga, yung nangyari nga kay Job, eh, hindi nga in-explain ni Lord. Eh. Bakit siya nagkaroon ng ganun? But instead, they just blessed him. Lahat ang nawala sa kanya, dinoble niya. Kung maganda na yung anak niya, palagay ko mas lalong gumanda yung anak niya. Imagine that. Maraming mga may sakit. And they cannot see the purpose of the suffering that they are suffering right now. God wants you to trust Him. Trust Him. Worthy po na magtiwala sa Diyos. Human mortality and the brokenness of our world means that we need to learn to live joyfully within limits. Mamamatay ka. Mamamatay tayo. And because the world is uh, affected by sin and the consequences of sin. So, anong gagawin mo? You need to live joyfully. Amen? So, when God said, let us make man in our image and likeness, the glory of God is our humanity. I mean, God is bringing many sons to glory. Doxa. In the flesh, mag-reveal ang glory ng Diyos. Kaya, every time you suffer, every time may mga pain, and you don't know these things, mga kapatid, just thank the Lord. Trust Him. Amen? Trust Him. For God is good, and His mercy endures forever. Tayo po ay manalangin. Tayo ay magpasalamat sa ating Panginoon. Father, today, we thank you for bringing us an understanding of the purpose that you have given us. Why you have created us here on earth to be your royal representative here on earth. Thank you so much, Lord, for blessing us with our family. And allow us to enjoy even the food that we eat the drinks that we drink every day, pasalamatan namin, Panginoon, because you are in control. Even in the life of Job, na nakarana sa matinding suffering, you didn't even explain to him kung bakit nangyari ang mga bagay na ito. 
we can speculate reason why he suffered those things. But the thing is, God never told us, told him, kung ano yung nangyari sa kanya. Mahirap ay paliwanag. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa iyong ginagawa sa buhay namin. Bless our children. Bless our grandchildren. Bless our family. Even bless the ministry, even the work of our hands. Bless it, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We bless you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.